Echo, is there a timer oh. set? I don't know. We're going to need to mute. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, this is MS Office Hours. It's Thursday, uh, August 29th. My name is Heather Cox, and with me today are my co hosts, Anthony Wallace. You're muted. And you're on mute. And that's Andrea Sangrio, and she is in the office today and switching between devices. So I will go ahead and introduce TJ. If you are hey. on. Oh, there we go. You want to you want to do your TJ info? Go. Sure. We're so excited to have TJ with us from the product group to talk about all things uh, LTI for all the learning management systems. Uh, he's got a ton of info, and I am excited to see him do it all in twenty minutes. All right, TJ, it's your show. Thank you for the reminder on time, Andrea. I was going to ask that, so I stay on time. Uh, so I'm going to move kind of quick. I encourage anybody to throw questions in the chat. We'll get back to them as we can, and I'm sure my friends will help me keep up there. And uh, or if something's super important, you know, go ahead and raise a hand, and I'm happy to pause. Um, I want to share my screen here really quick. I'm going to run through just a couple slides, but I'm going to spend most of my time in the actual experience, so you can see how this really works. Um, so for folks who haven't heard of our LTI tools. We have quite a few of them that work with the major LMSs, any LMS that supports the LTI uh, uh, protocol, uh, LTI 1.3 particularly. Um, and we built quite a story, I think, around this concept of your LMS plus Microsoft 365. So this is the idea here is that the LMSs don't have a lot of these tools and experiences built in. You know, we talked a little bit about OneNote today, other uh, apps and services like, like the Office apps, of course, Word, PowerPoint, Excel. Uh, even PDFs, videos, you know, LMSs don't have this built in. They can't create a, uh, you know, a, 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 a Word doc or anything without Word. And attaching documents to courses is a pretty natural thing for teachers. And likely today they're doing that in various ways, hopefully with our LTI tools, but I'm going to give you some really good reasons why they should use the LTI tools and why that'll help you and the IT group as well as academic groups uh, uh, together to keep a kind of, you know, if you will, a self safe and sane environment. Um, you know, so again, the positioning on this is really, you know, the LMS is there for your one place for assignments uh, as an educator or a, uh, a learner to discover things, what's to be done, of course, that's a big use. Gradebook is important there. We find those two things are most important. You know, all the assignments go here, all the grades go here. Um, but then the experiences and the, the classroom interactions, uh, even things like collaborations and a system like Canvas and stuff can be done with documents and with Office uh, very nicely. Um, so again, to just kind of position that, you know, we have LTI tools that'll let you bring our productivity apps, our chat, our real-time collaboration video uh, and Teams meetings, the breakout groups there, live engagements, and now these AI-powered learning experiences and insights uh, to your LMS. Um, so I'm going to skip a whole bunch of slides here, and I will make the deck available so you can go through them uh, to learn more about you know, how and why we built some of these things. But to just kind of run through the list here of what's available now um, for Canvas, uh, Brightspace, Blackboard, uh, Schoology, Moodle, um, single sign-on, you know, is kind of a, a basic thing. So if you have an LMS in your environment today, hopefully you're using uh, Antra to get folks in there. That provides single sign-on straight through to all the uh, 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 LTI tools. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, um, and also uh, you know uh, lets you implement things like two-factor auth and everything on the front end of that LMS. Um, the preview I'll show you. I want to run through is assignments, like bringing all of our unique experiences and multiple things. That's one thing to keep in mind as I talk about this is assignments like you do more complex activities, including our learning accelerated flip camera, make code whiteboard, uh, forms, uh, auto graded quizzes, et cetera, uh, or just, just forms um, to, to the LMS uh, and to the gradebook, uh, more importantly, integrating um, and embedding documents. You know, that's kind of like a bread and butter thing. Uh, but I want to point out something really important here is like sharing a link is great. Um, but our OneDrive LTI does the file orchestration for you on the back end behind the LMS, and that's very important in the world of security, AI, uh, you know, to have an environment where, uh, you know, the documents shared with folks are properly permissioned and copied where they need to be uh, for users to find those and find them securely. 
um, meetings, you can bring the meetings uh, view right into the LMS. Uh, classes, uh, you know, teams teams themselves for collaboration, bringing a team tile right there inside of the LMS, uh, alerts for notifications right there, reflect check-ins for social emotional help and just a happier classroom. Uh, and OneNote, uh, like you mentioned, pinning that right to the LMS for things like journaling in an English course or something uh, gets pretty darn handy. Um, and accessibility throughout. So the immersive reader is implemented in all those LMSs I mentioned. Um, and also works through to the office app, so you have an accessible and better reading experience through assignments and through the through the uh, documents attached. Um, this slide in the deck, when you get it, uh, is interactive. You can click to find how to install these things uh, through these things and and join the previews. You know, for the ones that aren't quite here yet. Um, uh, but you know, so please take a look at those um, and what's available for your LMS. Um, I want to focus today on two OneDrive LTI and the uh, accelerator assignments uh, available through our new assignments LTI. So OneDrive LTI might seem like the boring one. Hey, this is just files, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, but it can both, it can do two things. One, it, it creates uh, an incredibly engaging experience inside the LMS, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll show you this in, in Schoology here. I don't know if there are any Schoology users on here, but regardless, this looks, pretty much the same in any of the LMSs, they have different ways to embed, but uh, it can create an, an incredibly focused and engaging experience in the LMS uh, because we can embed documents, video, PDFs alike right into the lesson. So, it, you know, like in Schoology here where I can get this great 4K video, you know, just kind of playing and shared out to my students uh, as, hey, or watch my lecture, is a little bit maybe more exciting than a lecture with the planes here, but um, that can be done. It's it's a, it's an easy workflow to, to take the recording out of your recordings folder uh, or out of out of your team's channel and just embed it in the lesson and say, here, you know, here's here's the thing I, I need you to, to review if you weren't in class or or to review before you do tonight's homework. And then Word PowerPoint Excel being embedded straight in there. This is these are a real office viewer straight inside of the LMS uh, and and properly permissioned. So this edit button would appear for any instructor, any educator in the course, even co-teachers that have that role. Uh, and the edit button would not appear for resources for students, or if they're filling out the file, it would start out as theirs. Once they submit it, it would become the uh, the professors to grade um, and then uh, return it to them. Um, and we manage, we orchestrate all those permissions on the back end. These files are actually going to a SharePoint site that's attached with this LMS course. The OneDrive LTI sets up that site uh, and manages files in there, and it manages them with group permissions, uh, you know, particular for read, write, for those educators and read only for those students for a resource file, for example, here. And that is super important in the world of, of AI or coming to AI, where uh, that, that LLM can find everything within your environment, within M365. Like, let's say you have Copilot enabled. If you're using uh, shared links, if, you're, if your instructors today are just saying, oh, I got this, I don't need the LTI, I'm just going to uh, create an open anonymous share link in, in OneDrive and paste it into my course. Those links are, you know, oversharing uh, and possibly or use something like security by obscurity. I'll throw it into this OneDrive uh, folder and then share it out to my course, open it up. Um, you know, those aren't great behaviors and OneDrive can can help with that. The OneDrive LTI can help with that and make sure the files are properly permissioned, properly stored in SharePoint, can be found uh, by Copilot or uh, other AI when required to be found or should be found and and not when when somebody shouldn't have permission or or access. So just something to re remember there and a really good reason uh, to bring OneDrive into your environment is it it just works and make sure that the files are shared with the folks that they're supposed to be with the correct permissions. Um, so I want to move on to to the second thing I want to focus on today is our our new LTI that we're bringing uh, uh, to the table here. It's in preview right now. Uh, we hope to be GAA within a couple of weeks. Plans may change as we discover things. That's what a preview is for, but that's our that's our hope. Um, and this brings the accelerators, uh, the learning accelerators to your LMS. So reading, math, speaker, search, and reflect. I don't have time today to go through all of these great accelerators, but I'll share some links and some information on them so you can dig into them. They really are incredible experiences, a really great way to bring AI to your classroom. And in a way where you can't really, these, these things teach the process. They don't just check the results. So can't really cheat on these things with AI. They are AI that can't be, AI can't be used against them, if you will. 
So something like uh, Search Coach is a great example of that. Uh, all of them are, but Search Coach is one I can I can point out where you know it's the journey of finding and you know, writing better queries, uh, validating results, teaching you what trustworthy results are. You're, you're really experiencing those these things as a student with AI powering 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 it, and what the educator is reflecting on or grading if they wish is that process. Uh, and and not just the result. The citations it can generate for you, but it's learning how to search and find information that it focus on that info literacy. Um, I'm so again, interrupt you for yep, two go ahead. seconds. Say that all of our high ed institutions that may not have thought learning accelerators were for them. That's yep. the one that is for <laughs> all of you. And to really take a moment to look at Search Coach and uh, make sure folks on your campuses know about it. Yeah, and there's and I think there'd be no argument that being a better presenter. Uh, math, uh, you know, focused on algebra one, which now spans a very wide range into first year of college or those those students that thought they never wanted to see math again, but decided to sign up for the curriculum that does. These are great things to use at those early years and reading, though a lot of our content that we package in is K-12 focused. You can put your own content in there and that can help students as well, especially multi-language learners, et cetera. Um, so I'd, you know, I'd, I'd love to, to convince you that that these are all applicable. Um, I will include these links uh, with the deck uh, that you can drill in on these and, and see how they work and how they can be used. Um, and one special announcement that I'll make today is that the math math progress is now in preview. So that'll be rolling out to tenants. Uh, I'll share some information on that, how to discover it, how to use it, how to how to start playing with it. But that preview is now open publicly um, and will be available to you. Um, so I'm going to, without further ado, I'm going to jump in and just do a quick, quick overview of the, the assignments LTI and how these things can be used. I'm going to create a new Teams assignments. This will appear in the, the Canvas uh, you know, assignment menu here in Schoology materials menu. And I'm going to create a new one. Uh, so this is going to open straight into the assignment, create new assignment template in Teams. Uh, so I, I can either create a new one, I can create a quiz uh, kind of right from here. I can copy an existing one, reuse, you know, something I've, I've already done. Um, in this, this role, I'll create a new one. I'm going to, this will be, I'm going to entitle this assignment, uh, research, I can spell. So I'll create the research presentation part two. So let's say I did a part one of this where I had them create a, a an outline, a draft, citations page. This is part two. I want to I want my students to get ready for a presentation. So I'm going to say my script. I want them to to build a script. So each student's going to build and turn in a script. I'm going to set this to have each student turn in their own copy of this. Um, and then I'm going to add a, a PowerPoint. My presentation. And I'm going to have every student turn in a copy of that. And then I'm going to add a learning accelerator. I'm going to add a, a speaker progress here. I'm going to turn on all the bells and whistles of it, though you don't have to. Um, but speaker progress is going to coach them through their pace, their filler words, pitch, inclusiveness, repetitive language, body language, even eye contact and things. And I can turn each of these on and off because pr uh, pronunciation, for example, sometimes uh, accents aren't wrong. Sometimes they are if you're trying to speak in a particular accent in Spanish or English or something. So uh, we can toggle these different things. I'm going to turn them all on just for this example. Um, and I'm going to write some bad instructions here on purpose so you can see how AI can help me uh, do this. Uh, write a script. Uh, Create your deck, use speaker. Oop. Sorry, I'm in a I'm in a test environment for our dev team, so something glitched there. Uh, let's pretend I created that. What would happen here? I would attach it, checkbox and attach it. It would do that for me. I'd pop into the school G list like this, and this is my actual research paper part one. Uh, that I'm showing you here. So this one, I said, write an outline, write a draft, uh, use search progress, you know, to find your sources uh, backing uh, claims. And uh, this was the AI I used. I typed a, a similar sentence to what I typed there. Just write your outline, write your draft, you know, do find five pieces of evidence backing your your claims. And I hit the the magic 
generate me uh, some better instructions button, and this is what it did. Um, so that took all of a, of a few seconds there. In, in Schoology now, I'm getting feedback as the instructor on how many folks have turned it in, how many people have returned it. I can jump straight into my grading view uh, in Teams and speed grade through all my different students, reviewing each of those documents and things they submitted. Uh, and when I return here, it would update, you know, show me how many more have turned it in. It's only one person turned it in here, so I'm done. Um, and all of those grades go straight back to the LMS gradebook. So this grade uh, was a grade that I entered uh, here in Teams. So if you see my student here, Susanna, uh, you know, I gave her that 96%. I gave her that great job comment. And when I came back to Schoology, um, it was all in there uh, with my comment. So I'm going to pause there for any questions or other things, and I'm going to any other comments. And I will uh, kind of pause on this slide where you can sign up for the preview. And again, we'll be at GA very, very soon. Uh, and then I'm also going to share some info on how to join us for our LTI office hours, where to find docs for all the other LTIs to install, uh, and anything else I didn't have time to cover today. I'm impressed, TJ. You got through a lot very, very quickly, but it looks like Mark's got a question. Uh, similar to a chat question, uh, one of our problems with the Brightspace LTI when we looked at it was that um, basically we have to grant uh, their application full control into our SharePoint environment. So basically at that point, you know, they have access to not only, obviously they need to create a SharePoint site and then they put the files in the SharePoint site, but then, you know, we have other compliance stuff in our SharePoint site and, and granting this, this LTI application access to that was problematic for us and we had to basically say no to it. Has there been any thought of how to protect some portions of your SharePoint environment and still grant the LTI the ability to do things? Yeah, I think I think I have some good news for you there. So if you're talking specifically about the OneDrive LTI, um, it does not uh, require DTL or any of the LMSs to, to have permission. So when you're granting that permission as the admin, you're granting it to the Microsoft tool. And actually, we have it right now where it has to prompt you for that. That's an old permission model. We're moving to a new one where it's first party and it won't even ask you because it's all Microsoft and it's all covered up under our uh, our security. So there is no requirement to grant the LMS access to your SharePoint sites. If you install the OneDrive LTI, when you're doing that consent as the admin, you're doing it for the OneDrive LTI app, the Microsoft tool to access those sites. Okay, thanks. And there is another Mark in the chat, um, yep. and then we'll get to Jack. Yeah, uh, just following up on the on exactly what you were talking about, that was one of our big concerns as well. Oh, do you have an ETA on that change to the new app model? Because we're looking at a Canvas deployment yep. pretty soon. So it, it should be sometime during the semester. I don't know exactly when the okay. team hasn't begun those sprints yet, but um, we, we did. Uh, I'm going to look really quickly to see if we added any notes to our documentation. I believe we did um, because that dialogue was very confusing for a lot of folks. And it was just something we got stuck doing at the time because we were kind of in the middle of, a, of kind of an old to new model change. Um, so unfortunately, it's stuck. But uh, basically, and I'm I'm happy to help here. Any any anything I can do. I've written a lot of even big international MOEs, nice emails saying this is a Microsoft tool. You're only granting to Microsoft tool. It's all covered by our our privacy and and other uh, uh, you know compliance pieces. Um, so if I can help in any way to unblock that, uh, let me know in the meantime. But that change will happen eventually. I just don't know exactly when. Thanks. Hey, I'm Jack DeMay, and what I'm wondering is we've got faculty who would love to build out a course with the LTI and uh, build in assignments or other things like that, the learning accelerators from course to course. Mm -hmm. Can they carry that course once copied? We're a Moodle school. Can they carry that course from one semester to the next, or will all the LTI links break? That's a great question. So our OneDrive LTI and Assignments LTI, the ones that kind of are involved or would be you know, resources for an assignment or whatnot and participate in the different LMS copies, they both fully support copy. So what will happen is when the tool, when the, when the course gets copied, we don't get an LTI signal. We don't know it's been copied at that point. So it's really just the LMS metadata sitting there. But as those links get clicked, the files get pulled over from the old course to the new course. 
So that's kind okay. of the LTI way of doing a copy. So it does fully support that that reuse. And it does that through Canvas, uh, you know, Moodle, Schoology, Blackboard, any of their copy, copy to module, copy to course, copy to whatever they call it, it will support that. When the new user comes in and clicks it, it will pull it over. Um, for okay. the new assignments, ones I showed, the instructor does have to act to initialize it because they have to set a due date for that thing and the grades will copy over, right? Um, but, you know, for OneDrive, it just seamlessly happens. So even if the student is in there first, it will make the copy and prep it for that course. Cool, thanks. Any other questions on that? I'll start popping some yeah. of this info in the chat. Yeah, one more from Mark, and that'll probably right. be our last one before we have to close out for today. So uh, I believe when we were testing this before, um, a user could basically take a, a you know a file that they have in their own OneDrive and and you know put it into the the new SharePoint site that would be for the for the course, right? Given given the new requirement on storage and and the uh, you know the, the limitations that we have now, where we don't have 24 petabytes anymore, has there been any thought to how to kind of keep that in line a little bit better so we don't get like a, a teacher, you know, taking a huge file from their OneDrive and putting it into five different courses and anything like that, or, or am I misunderstanding somehow how the tool works? Yeah, so I mean, of course, this does. You know, the, the copies are made. Um, you know, so the question is, you know, what they're coming from today. So we are looking at ways to specifically say, um, you know, one copy of this thing, reuse it. You know, don't don't make a copy, make a make a link instead. That's we're researching how to do that right now. Um, we started with the making a copy of because that's what most teachers do. They don't want, you know, it's an edit they make on something uh, over here to affect something over there that they've already published or people have already consumed. Um, so we started with that pattern. Um, so it would really be in that in that sense. I mean, it's only making one copy of that doc uh, to the back end uh, site, uh, you know, for resources. So in, in that sense, it's not making any additional copies and it's just going toward your overall quota. Um, you can, of course, find these things so there's a uh, we have a script out on our on our uh, shared github on on how to find these find all the sharepoint sites uh that were uh created uh you know by the onedrive lti you know linked with canvas schoology blackboard or other courses um so you can implement the same archive pattern uh that you do on the uh with lms courses on those sharepoint sites um so a few tools you can use there um yeah you know files take space um, but you know, I know the LMSs all do this as well. So the the alternatives that the LMSs have, if you're not using, you know, let's say you're not using the OneDrive LTI for assignments, and you just tell students upload your your assignments, then you're using storage on the LMS side. And I know many of the LMSs have a charge model for storage there as well. So it's kind of a a, a balance. Thank you. All right. I think that wraps us up, Heather. Yeah, nothing left to say. TJ, I'm always impressed. I'm impressed with this, the speed talking. It was magical. You did such a great job. I appreciate your flexibility <laughs> working with a little bit less time than promised because questions went long. So thank you everybody for coming. Just um, in case any of you have heard of a solution called Nebula One and you are interested in learning more about that, that is the topic for next week. You'll obviously get your email that gives you the topic, but just wanted to give you a heads up if that's something that is of interest to you. So I will kick everyone out of the meeting so that we don't have to see the recording thing. Just keep going and going and going, and uh, I'll get this posted as soon as possible. We'll talk to y'all later. See everybody next week. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody.